Jackson Jills. Welcome back to the Dank Tank. Your host, the local internet degenerate, is going to show you a couple of interesting builds that you can run on Hunt Showdown. Um, these builds are indeed optimized. They have synergy. They're not high tier necessarily per se. Uh, I'll, I'll go over what I mean by that in just a moment. So I'm going to show you how, how to start these builds, like a budget option for them, and then I'm going to show you the finished product. So this, I, I'll, I'll start with the finished product first. This is a finished product for a, a bullet grubber build. Um, you could swap out Mockingbird for Dolches if you want. I chose not to because I felt like it's better to get something stronger close range and then have your uh, repost or your, your bayonet as a backup close range option. And of course you've got the Maz and the Gant for long range. Now uh, this is build is based on starting with Bullet Grubber. So, respectively, this is the Bullet Grubber budget version. All right, It still makes pretty expensive loadout. Um, Rangaroo and, and Mockingbird are not cheap weapons to run. However, Bullet Grubber is such a rare, rare trait to start with that I, I feel like it's warranted that you're able to take two weapons that benefit from it right off the bat and you have your options covered you got your long range you got your close range and you're good to go you got a decent melee weapon uh knuckle knives which you downgrade to regular knuckles after you switch uh after you upgrade getting what what is it called do 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 do, do quartermaster so you could have a bigger weapon and then you get the better mazin with a bayonet on the end Next up, we have the melee build. All right, bomb lance. Um, so you typically would would build this way if you started with um, silent killer, for example, or maybe even whisper smith. Um, Devotion is another one that may prompt you to start building for a melee build. The way this build uh, starts for me is I just take a martini, Henry, no scopes. Uh, really simple, straightforward, long-range weapon, and then I take the saber. This is probably going to change in future update. I might just start with the bomb lance right away, and then I'll have the little par spark sniper uh, pistol. Um, not sniper, just just a sparks pistol in the second slot. So that's something I'm considering switching to once it's out and uh, once I see what the reload reload speed on it is. My, I took martini because it has a good reload speed on it. Um, even though it does somewhat less damage than the sparks uh, Obsidian Sun, so this this is a, a shotgun build actually um, It it starts kind of funny. So for now, it's it's a Romero um, They're gonna come out with the Romero with a bigger magazine size so that you'll probably switch to that in the second slot It should honestly be the sparks pistol when that comes out uh, instead of the uppercut but since it's not out yet, I'm using the uppercut here, which is pretty expensive, considering it's not very budget. Um, and then eventually using Quartermaster, uh, grabbing Bullet Grubber, and stuff like that. It's kind of like another Bullet Grubber build, except it doesn't start with Bullet Grubber. This build you would uh, build into without starting any particular direction, actually. If you just have a generic build, you don't have... Uh, bolt thrower, you don't have hundred hands, you don't have levering, you don't have stuff like that. You, you just have generic, I don't know, like uh, Greyhound, generic uh, Beast Face, generic Gator Legs, something like just a generic build that you can pretty much take in any direction because the starting perks are good, but uh, it, it's, it's not catering towards any particular weapons or play style as of yet then you could go for the shotgun build. Um, I would prioritize, so starting with the Romero, starting with the starting build here, right? Uh, you could keep this pistol for a while, the uppercut, and starting with the Romero, um, you may consider upgrading it to a slate, uh, dependent on whether you want to get Iron Devastator, for example. I would personally prioritize just getting all the defensive traits all the mobility traits and then once you start accumulating those then instead of Romero maybe swap up to Slater Crown and King and then during the end of your build then you start buying into Bullet Grubber, Iron Devastators, uh, uh, Iron Sharpshooter of course and Quartermaster 
and that's when you transition over to the Spectre and the Rogaru, respectively, right? You don't want to get um, either one of these guns equipped until you have Bullet Grubber. And once you do have Bullet Grubber, you probably want to get them both at the same time. So you probably want enough points to get Quartermaster and Bullet Grubber at the same time. Whereas Iron Devastator um, is something you can get beforehand. I guess technically you, you could grab a Spectre beforehand too, while still carrying the Uppercut. And then having Quartermaster be like the very, very last thing you get. Next up, we have the 100 hands build. So you start with the levering or you start with the 100 hands. This is the build you would run. Um, I start it as though it doesn't have 100 hands. I start as though, oh, you got levering or iron repeater. This is how it starts. Um, if I happen to have 100 hands instead of levering, for example, I would actually keep 100 hands here. And um, in place of this last gust, I would likely swap in, there could be a Nagant Deadeye, it's one possibility, uh, maybe a Rogaru, like pretty much one of those two actually, you don't, you don't really have much uh, other options. They both provide pretty decent range. Uh, for budget option, Deadeye, you can't go wrong, right? If you, if you want to go a more expensive route, then yeah, sure, take the Rogaru. Um, it, it technically offers longer range than even the final product would offer. Um, this build is mostly meant for, I wouldn't say so much up close and personal, but it's mostly meant for like uh, close to mid range. As the bow operates really well in close range. Uh, Last Gust op operates really well in close and medium range. So you're not... Uh, lacking in those departments and long range you're kind of lacking velocity helps a little bit but yeah you shouldn't be messing with long range uh, messing around in long range battles for that long uh, unlike with these other builds that kind of let you do that right you have long ammo in all of them uh, Lorona's hair so this I know I said it these will all be very unique builds what I used to do is I used to run dually pistols on her and then on the marksman build, I would run, what was it? I would run this, the Dolch. And then on the Deadeye build, I would run Chain Pistol. But since they all use Bullet Grubber anyways, I figured why why make it weird? Why run dualies? I could literally just put Dolch on every single one of them. So boom, boom. And who was the other one? Was it Weird Sister? Weird Sister, yeah. Um, so boom, boom, boom. These are Sniper, Marksman, and Deadeye respectively. And they all use the Dolch because they all run Bullet Grubber. Um, and, and they all need like a decent close range weapon. Dolch was the best thing that came to mind because it offers the penetration. It offers the uh, shooting speed, the lethality that it needs. Um, Weird Sister appreciates it the most because Deadeye honestly sucks. I, if you remember at the beginning, I said that not all of these builds are high tier. Point in case. You do not want to ever be caught dead with Deadeye. But sometimes you get a Hunter and they're stuck with it. And you want to synergize around it. So this is what you'd build. Back to the Sniper, right? Uh, sniper, I start with the Centennial. And I give it Spitfire. So that's more ammo. More medium sized ammo for both guns. And yeah. You know, it's, it's a little bit more tra uh, trap focus than explodey focus, right? So you can hold yourself up in a sniper tower more easily. They have to use more uh, more dynamites to get through all your traps. Uh, marksman, fairly similar. I, the reason why I'm starting with a officer um, instead of the Spitfire is because despite the Vetterly using medium-sized ammo, just like the Centennial did, uh, I'm, it's actually has high velocity ammo and I opted to put that in so I only kept an officer as a as a somewhat cheaper option I suppose you could say for Deadeye this is where things get really interesting um, we got the Nagant Precision Deadeye and we got dual Caldwell Conversion Pistol Pairs um, so this is like hey you happen to get Deadeye 
or you happen to get a steady hand this is I guess your default go to uh, starting build for it and yeah you can eventually upgrade it to this as you see before you right with, with what's it called steady aim um, it's not even a finished build actually I'm missing some health chunks too but for those of you wondering what I would take as a final trait in this let me just see what I have already so I do have bullet I do have dead eye I do have steady I do have frontiers right I have frontiersman okay uh, it's a tough choice. It might be pack mule. All right, pack mule is one option. Um, it might be serpent. Serpent's another. I don't see anything else that I'm missing. Yeah, I don't. I don't see what else I'm missing. It's probably pack mule. This is what I'd go with. And I think I was on mountain man. Yeah, Mountain Man's up next. The cool thing about Mountain Man, uh, or not Mountain Man, the X crossbow builds, um, they're actually budget already, right? Like, if if I got a new character and I had uh, Bolt Thrower, I would literally be running the exact same thing as my final build is, as what my final build is going to be. So it doesn't actually change much. Um, Build-wise... Uh, it's it's running the same defensive, the same mobility shit as all the other builds. Um, the main difference is in the utility or damage traits that you have. Um, the only one, it, the only two it has that are like staple or frontiersman, and of course, and bolt thrower, which is part of the idea between behind using these weapons. And um, I threw on serpent, necromancer, and vulture. Vulture, I I kind of feel like I throw vulture on everybody that's not close range i.e. Uh, tech wraith which would be close range even devil's advocate technically would be close range because you, you try going for these uh, specter slug kills so on them I don't have vulture because like they should be the first ones to come up on a body anyways to loot it whereas everyone else I try my best to, to get them vulture just for the team synergy so it has a lot of team support team synergy going on there right it could get the team ammo it could revive the team from a distance it could steal bounties uh, it could get clues from a distance um, it provides support fire with explosive bolts it can set up traps with poison bolts uh, it's just it, there's a lot going on for this build and it's very very budget friendly uh, a little even though it's a little bit meme I'd still consider it to be a high tier actually and then we have this one, which is all similarly, again, not a high tier, kind of meme -y, um, but it is very budget as well. So I'll show you how it starts. It's the one shot, I, I call it the one shot. Um, so you got the, the spark sniper, the officer, and then everything else is pretty much basic. Uh, actually, why do I have frag bomb here? Let me fix that. That's that's not correct. That should be uh, should be Constantina because this is a sniper build. So you should be trying to force sniper situations if you can, or keep them guessing where you are. If they if you take a shot and it doesn't uh, kill them, um, you don't want them to be able to like find you after. So it it did start with an officer upgrade to chain pistol with uh, with the FMJ. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. The only really uh, per traits it relies on for the sake of its weapon, the weapons used, are is steady aim and, of course, fanning. Where is it? Fanning. Um, the other optional ones I took were Frontiers, Vulture, and Poacher. Because I felt like Serpent would be a bad call. I don't know. I, f I felt like it, it doesn't need Serpent. So I gave it Poacher instead. So it has a sneak potential. Because Chain Pistol with fanning it's actually really strong at close ranges if you sneak up on a team in a compound and you're able to get through a trap quietly you could really do a lot of damage like you could wipe out a team of three with chain pistol fanning you have enough bullets available that you can take out three people um everything else is pretty staple so let's talk about traits and and their their tiers right i'd say frontiersmen would be s tier it's it's always good it has so many applications you get more traps you get more heals 
Um, you get more flares. That, that, that pretty much covers it. I mean, it, it doesn't do anything for the, the melee weapon tool that you're using, obviously. But yeah, all, all those other things combined, it's, it just makes it great. And then other traits like Doctor and Physician uh, make those even better because that additional medkit heal that you get is even more superior. It's like having a vitality shot at that point. Once you have both Physician and Doctor, boom. Your, your medkit turns into vitality shot. Frontiersman gives you an additional use of a vitality shot. So it gets like, here, have another extra vitality shot, have another extra trap, have another extra flare. You can't go wrong. S tier. I wouldn't say top, top, top tier. Like uh, like the highest, t uh, the very top of S tier. I wouldn't say that much. But it's it's very, very strong. Uh, fanning is, I would say, is another S tier. Um, you, you basically take unviable well, weapons that are unviable at close range. And you make them almost as good as a shotgun. Right. Yeah, uh, they're very fast. They're practically automatic. It's a really good trait, and uh, levering is up there with it. If I can find it, leathering would be up there with it. Again, though, not the top, top, top of S tier. Uh, we have another trait for that. I think that's actually physician. Would physician be top, top of S? Hmm. Yeah, Physician is definitely my favorite. Physician is what basically turns your medkit into vitality shots. Without Doctor, they're weak vitality shots. With Doctor, they're strong vitality shots. But with Physician, they're basically vitality shots. They, they apply that quickly. And this is actually the top, top of the S tier, in my opinion. Because it also improves the speed of bandaging if you're bleeding. It improves the speed of bandaging if you're burning. Um... In addition to affecting how fast the medkit works, it doesn't work on medkits you find around in the wild, but on the medkits you bring with you, it boosts that speed and it boosts the speed of recovering from any damage that you're, you're any uh, special type of damage that you're taking other than poison uh, that you need to bandage up for. It actually reduces the time on that. So that's why I put this as at the top, top of S tier. Uh, Doctor technically S tier 2, right? It turns your, your med kits into like full vitality shots. Um, but obviously not at the top. Physician just offers so many different utilities on it. I'd even say Frontiersman's a bit higher than Doctor, to be honest, by like one step. Um, fanning and Levering being weapon based would be on the lower end of the S tier. Next up, we got Quartermaster. Um, it's difficult to place it into tier because it's like not necessary. Any any build where I can think of, oh, Quartermaster makes this build better. If you didn't have Quartermaster, you can honestly make that build almost as good as it would be with the Quartermaster equivalent. So Quartermaster is like more of a nice to have. Does it guarantee value every match? I don't know about that. I want to put it on the low A tier because the way I see it, S tier is like, dude, you're crazy if you don't run it. A tier, it's like, okay, if you run it, you're going to get value every match. Quartermaster, I don't know if you're going to get value every match, to be honest. So I, I want to, but I don't think it belongs in B, or t B tier. So I want to put it in A tier. I'm going to put it at the bottom of A tier. Uh, Bullet Grubber, very similar. It's it's like, you can't guarantee value out of it, you know? So it normally it will give you value. I'd say like 90% of matches it'll give you value if you pr use the right weapons that go along with it. It'll give you value. Um, that said, I I think it would also be like pretty low on the A tier. All right, we got South Skin here. Pretty uh, this one's actually pretty high on the A tier, right? Um, it'll typically always give you value. Kind of like Bullet Grubber, it'll give you value in like 90% of matches. Uh, Silent Killer, S tier if you're a melee build, B tier if you're not, simple as that. Uh, Lightfoot, this would be, this would be the one and only S tier mobility trait, in my opinion. Uh, being able to silently vault, jump, fall, and climb in most situations. There are some situations where it's like, okay, you took a little bit of fall damage, your character is going to make a lot of noise if you took the fall damage. So this is why typically you want to combine Lightfoot with Kite Skin. 
um, which will lower the amount of damage you take, which means you can you can fall from a greater height more safely and not make any sounds. In a nutshell, but yeah, being able to vault and and climb ladders in particular are huge benefits to um, sneaking up and and dealing with enemies in a compound situation. Uh, Greyhound, I would also put up there. It's if you run stamina shots, yeah, you don't really need it at all, um, which is why I don't really run it on my bomb lance build, because uh, I have two stamina shots on it. When, when would I ever need Greyhound? But on every other build, pretty much, I've run Greyhound, and this is just because, hey, you're, you're technically not going to get value out of it every match, so I don't bother S-tiering it. Um, you should be able to get value out of it every match. But you're not guaranteed to. And the reason for that is sometimes the crow spawns, the noise trap spawns, the grunt spawns. Sometimes the spawns of the things around you are just so unfavorable that you are it's like impossible to get Greyhound value. Unless you literally run over and trip every crow and horse and whatever else, every enemy. Um, and then, yeah, it's like it defeats the purpose of running other things like beast face and whatnot so greyhound i wouldn't i'd say shouldn't be used like that and for that reason i'm putting it in the low a tier like pretty much borderline b a tier um vulture is a similar situation i can't technically put it in a tier as much as i'd like to like if you were playing on a team it would be a tier if you're playing solo it's it's d tier like it's useless it does nothing when you solo so we'll ignore that i mean it doesn't do nothing it, there's it's very very rare that you get value out of it that, that you find a body that's been looted twice and you can loot it again very rare all right the the steady aim sniper scope myth basically all the all the gun aiming uh traits i would say they they fall into c tier except for dead eye dead eye is like d tier because dead eye as a scope is awful pack mule it's pretty good you won't always get value out of it because sometimes you just you have too many consumables already right you have too many tools and consumables how are you what's the extra one going to do for you you know you're already full you don't need another one so um i'd say s tier is s tier the right one yeah s tier actually if you're a melee build s tier for sure pack mule if you're not melee build uh it's high on the b tier like borderline a because normally you can get good value out of it but there's no guarantee that you get value out of it every match uh this useless low tier we talked about those ones already 100 hands you're running a bow a tier you're not running a bow like f tier fail tier uh useless uh, determination. A lot of people say this one should be high tier. Stamina recovery starts sooner. What I've discovered is that this only applies to the melee stamina bar. Um, and on top of that, you, you typically would run stamina shots on a melee build. And yet again, on top of that, it's pretty easy to manage your stamina bar as well. Uh, so, and if it's not, if you feel like it's not easy to manage, uh, maybe consider bringing a Silence Nagant. Um, maybe consider changing what, what tool you're using, or maybe consider trying a melee build for a change, actually. Melee build's pretty fun and uh, strong as well. Uh, bolt thrower, again, like, you're, yeah. If, if you run crossbows, okay, this is easily an A tier. If not, what, what, do you, what business do you have with it on? Uh, ambidextrous, I got mixed feelings about because you don't really need it if you're dual wielding. Um, I don't even know how much, what percentage it increases the reload speed by, but it it always feels like it's not needed. So I'm going to give it a solid B. Whispersmith, uh, this would be a S tier on melee builds. And I'm going to say borderline B A tier on other builds because you can't guarantee value out of it sometimes you just need one weapon to to finish off a team you don't even need the weapon swap um so it's it's based on the build there might be some builds where it's actually a good idea to get whisper smith off the top of my head maybe the the sparks build i was using the one shot build uh could maybe use this uh maybe the dead eye build could use it 
Yeah, those are definitely things to think about for on my part. Uh, steady hand, like, you're going to wish you never get this. Because if you do get it, you're stuck using dead eye. <laughs> you're stuck using dead eye on the precision I got, which sucks. Yeah. It's it, it's able to do its job, but it's it's probably the worst weapon in all my builds. Uh, resilience is kind of pointless. Marksman, Scopesmith, Iron Repeater, we talked about already. These are all C tier. Um, but if, you, if you're using the weapons they belong to, then yeah, you could easily see that becoming a B tier. You're not guaranteed value, right? Uh, all the kills you get might be hip fire, which would make these traits pointless. Um, Assailant, I used to think this one was really good. I used to run it religiously um, with throwing knives on certain builds. Now, I've realized that you can you can instead throw the knife, run up to the person you threw it at, and pull it back out, and it'll do more damage than a heavy melee with throwing knives. Um, so maybe this is still good with throwing axes. I never use throwing axes, to be honest. I stick with throwing knives. Um, with throwing knives, yeah, it's, it's very pointless. It's... Some people I've seen rank it as an A tier perk. I, it's F tier. You don't need it. You can literally just throw it, retrieve it. It does more damage, and it's just as safe to do. Tomahawks for memes. Uh, Poacher is pretty good for sneaking up, but like you definitely can't get. It. There's no way to guarantee value. You'll you'll see it be useful in maybe one out of every five matches, one out of every four matches, something like that. Kite skin's always good. Combos really well with light foot. Um, it gives you more options in terms of mobility. Like if, if someone shoots you and um, you want to get to a safe place and one of your options is to fall down somewhere, hey, normally it would kill you. With kite skin, it probably won't. And yeah, that, that pretty much summarizes all the... Oh yeah, dead eye. Fucking F tier. <laughs> Garbage. Um, yeah, that concludes the uh, the trait and build analysis. I hope it helps you guys out figuring out some builds and how to use certain traits that you end up stuck with, unfortunately. If you get any of the traits that I basically didn't cover, like I didn't really talk about Serpent too much. But yeah, there you go. You got the, the, your nine builds there. Thanks for tuning into the Dank Tank. Hope you guys enjoy. Good luck in your hunts. So you don't ever have to fret. I'm here to help you not forget. Show some love and then you're set. Enjoy your day with no regret. Now aren't you glad that we met?